Hello, good evening and welcome to this next episode of FPL Family with me, Lee, and this is Sam. Sam, happy Easter. Happy That's the first Easter. thing we should say. If you're celebrating Easter, happy Easter holidays to anybody. Happy Easter Sunday to anyone that's celebrating it. Um, the FPL Family household is a little bit snivelly this morning, isn't it? There's a little bit of a... What's kicking in here? A bit of flu, a little bit of a cold. What's going on here? I don't know. If you need to blow your nose during the stream, mute your mic and just... It's all right. You can just blow not... your nose. Yeah, I wasn't quite right on mm. Thursday morning when I start when I was recording the FPL it's pod. The stress of the wild card from this week, Possibly. isn't it? Possibly. The stress. Got up on Thursday morning and thought, mm, don't feel myself. Don't feel quite right. Didn't feel quite right, at Sky. Did you? Did over the Saturday. FPL pod? Yeah. And then by the time Friday, then I did a, the Q and A with Az on Friday night, and I got off that, and I thought, mm, no, I really don't feel that right. That right. And I seem to have developed a rather horrible cold of some kind. Mm. So anyway, yes. It was... was it wild card stress then? How stressed <laughs> out was doing the wild card this week? No, I didn't find it that stressful. You actually. didn't seem that stressed to be fair. No. You, it felt pretty locked in. Yeah. Even two or three days before. I felt like I kind of, apart from goalies and, you know, they were always causing me stress. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the ones I didn't go with, of course, get clean sheets this weekend. The ones I did go with, of course, did not. Of course. Uh, but that's just standard. The ones I sold also, you know, doing all right as well, Martinez. Thanks very much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, go- goalies are a bone of contention in my team regardless, aren't they? Yeah. So I think, yeah, for me, I didn't find it too stressful. I quite like wildcarding over an extended period of time, like an international break. I find that way less stressful than... Yeah. In a couple of days, because yeah. I think over an international break, you kind of you start creating it, and bit by bit, you feel like, yeah, it's starting to fall into place. Doing it for this game, would you say, would be quite stressful in the next forty-eight hours? Doing it before Tuesday's deadline. Yeah, I wouldn't fancy that much. I'm considering it. Yeah, I know you're not. I'm up. considering it. I'm putting it out there. I'm considering it. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't massively want to do it, but there's a few things that have happened this weekend. Yeah. That have made me think it might be a good time to do it. The Ollie Watkins injury is one of them. Yeah. Now, just as we were coming on, we saw a couple. And by the way, guys, hello. Welcome to the stream. We're going to talk about the games. We'll do our teams. We'll do all the usual stuff we see on a Sunday. We'll say hello to you guys as well in just a second. Um, but just as we were coming on, yes, Ollie Watkins. Um, apparently, he's got to have a scan. They're not sure how bad it is. Unai Emery's hoping that it's not too bad. Okay. But none of that feels like I'm going to be ready in the next week or so, does it? Because we've got the Man City away game coming up on Tuesday. Yeah. So there's a reasonable chance that if you own him, you might even be benching him anyway. Particularly if he's got a little niggle like this in his hamstring. But then for next weekend, they've got a reasonable fixture, haven't they? Brentford. Brentford at home. But then it's Arsenal away. And then he doesn't have a double game week. So Watkins is on my mind in terms of a bit of a sell. Um, then we've got the Gusto injury as well. So we're not kind of sure what's happened there. Um, not that it affects me, but it affects you. Lascelle is also out, if you ACL, didn't see that news. Yeah. That is terrible news for Lascelle. He's out for six to nine months and you know with what? an ACL. Really, really bad It's injury. a really frustrating one with the wild card now because I was yeah. so happy with the Lascelle pick because it enabled everything. It yeah, enabled yeah. everything else to just work. And it was exactly what I needed. It was a player that played a double in 37. Absolutely. I, I could Fit have him so for the nice fixtures. Nice, it, was, it was literally perfect. Yeah. And then I was driving to Spurs on Saturday while that game was on. And we weren't, Max and I weren't listening to it. He was chatting and he loves a bit of music, doesn't he? And he was singing away <laughs> in a car. Yeah. And uh, so I was relying on updates from the guys in the Slack. And my watch was p- started pinging. And it was Matt going, La- that injury to the cells doesn't look good. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah. And I thought, right, just get to Spurs and then we'll check it. And when I got there and he'd gone off, I thought, oh no, this is. I mean, actually, as it happened, it, you know, it, they didn't keep a clean sheet anyway. But at that point, I was and like, you, oh. And you know what? That's the third or fourth quite serious knee injury that like Newcastle have had this year. I, it's. They're getting injuries left, right and centre, Newcastle. I don't, I don't want to speak badly of the way that they manage that club, obviously, but there's some, there's got to be something in that, isn't there? The amount of injuries they've had, Maybe. serious injuries. Yeah, quite bad injuries this You've year. You've got to be looking at that going, well, are they rushing players back? Are they actually managing these players correctly? Mm. And what's going on there? Because that's the third or fourth like pretty major injury they've had. Yeah. Like Harvey Barnes only just coming back. We've got to talk about him because what a return yeah, came that back, was bang. to action from Harvey Barnes. Unbelievable, particularly that second goal. It was unreal. Um, but what something not quite right at Newcastle in the way they're managing players, in my opinion. But listen, it is bad for Lascelles. It's bad. And if you brought him in on wildcard, like you did last week, to enable a lot of other things, yeah, you've got to like, you've got to get rid now. And really, you've got to spend money to get rid because he's so cheap. 
but you can't really go sideways or you certainly can't go down can you what the only way only place to go that's sideways is is to go back to charlie taylor but the reason i moved off charlie taylor is because well one burnley and two (laughs) just burnley Burnley. and two they don't have a double which newcastle did so uh, and you know it's just a real shame and so spoiler alert i've already made a transfer You've made a transfer already. Yeah, it doesn't involve Lascelles at the moment. Oh, right. But that's because I left my wildcard squad with zero in the bank. Right. Which I never do. I always leave... A little bit in your back pocket. Always yeah. leave like 0.5 usually yeah. I aim for. But I couldn't make it work. And For a rainy day? But I also knew my transfer this week was going to give me a rainy day fund. So in my head I was like, okay. right, well, we won't have anything going into 30. But by 31 I'll make one transfer and that'll give me over a million in the bank. And that over a million in the bank then is my rainy day fund. But that rainy day fund, if Gusto is also injured, yeah, and Anthony Gordon's now suspended. Oh, we've got to talk about him. What a roller coaster of emotions that was for his owners. Did you see the video clip from um, who was it? TNT that had that coverage? No. So of what Anthony Gordon? Yeah. So they were showing the game, and it perfectly plays out that. Um, they're giving out the Man of the Match award right. as Anthony Gordon is getting sent off. Oh, so they're giving it to Anthony Gordon and they're talking about how oh how he's done he this and he's been and brilliant he and he's done all of this. Yeah. And literally, as they're saying it, they're like Anthony Gordon, and and the ref just red cards him and he's and he's and they're like oh he seems to be going off. Oh <laughs> no, he's been sent off. Yeah, they're stinker. like uh. Who okay. <laughs> Sorry, I think they still gave Barbie it to him. Barnes, I, don't know, I think they might have still given it to Anthony Gordon, I'm not sure. But well, it was really funny. It was, a, it was one of those perfectly timed, you couldn't have timed it better if you'd tried. Crazy game for yeah. Anthony Gordon. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's say hello to a few people, Sam. We've got uh, Cyberdet is in, Nigel the Crab. Hello, mate. In and moderating. Very nice to see you, mate. Um, Adam Stevo is in. A lot of hammy injuries going around as well. You know what, Adam? You're absolutely right. There's something to be said for the fact that uh, all of these players are playing basically, what, sometimes 9, 10 more minutes per weekend, yeah. which is another, you know, 10%. If you add another, what, three or four or five games onto a season, that's really what we're talking about here. That's a lot more games and these teams can't deal with it. And we're seeing injuries and Adam's absolutely right. There's so many hamstring injuries this season. And it doesn't help. I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily put all the blame on the extended time and stuff for what's happening at Newcastle. I think Newcastle... Yeah, but Newcastle managing their players badly, is but my possibly, opinion, but... but also they've had European football this season, which they haven't been used mm. to having in a season. So you know, you add those additional games into a season, and the players aren't used yeah, to big. it. You know, same with Aston Villa, right? They've had they've got players that are playing lots and lots and lots more games than they are ever used to playing in 100%, the season. 100%. Uh, Ken's Broms, Bromsgrove is in. Hey, Ken's. Nice to see you, mate. Thank you for the super chat. Happy Easter, both. Happy Easter Happy to you, Easter, sir. Happy Easter, Ken's. Uh, what a week of footy that ended with a snooze fest of a game. We're going to talk about that in a sec. Uh, on Watkins, thinking of him into Mateta to afford Foden into Salah. How do you feel about that, Sam? How do you feel about Mateta Coming in, got the double game week in 34, which is a nice looking one for Palace, if yeah. I remember rightly. Two yeah. home games. Um, and it enables him to go Foden into Salah. Mateta's definitely on my radar. Okay. Um, he's one of those players that I think him... <clears throat> sorry. Him and Cunha, both of them were are kind of players that I'm thinking about for 34. I actually don't mind the early move on him if it enables yeah. you to get to somebody like Salah because... You you have to sacrifice somebody unless you're wild carding to get Salah in. So there's a compromise. There's to be made a compromise if you want to be made. Yeah, and I, I, totally and agree. I actually don't mind the Mateta compromise because he's the sort of player that you could also bench in the weeks going up to the double if you didn't want to play. Differential him. as well. No one's got him. Yeah. Right, no one's got him. Uh, Wilco is in. Hello, Here mate. He is. Very nice to see you, Wilco. Um, FP Hell is in. Uh, scored 76 points. So not really that not so much hell heaven. for FPL Hell. Heaven FPL great. Heaven this week was 76 points. Uh, 74 points, very nice score. Um, Civilian X is here. Uh, you guys are legends. Thank you, Civilian. That's kind of you. Also, you'll never walk alone. League win loading. Listen, Civilian X, there is. I think it's yours. Plenty of time. How long have I been saying this now, Lee? You've plenty got to start trusting your wife. Go. No, 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 no. Plenty of you time go. to go. Plenty it's, of time to go. It's coming home. We've got, what have we got? Spurs have got to come to Anfield. We've got to go to Man U next weekend. Oh, yeah. Where we've just lost. Oh, so, I'm so sorry. What? Manchester United. We can start with them, if you like, because, oh, my goodness. Yeah, but that is, that's a typical 
Well, we'll do that in a minute. But that's typical. Man United go away to, what's it, Brentford. Yeah. And can't be bothered. Whereas when we come to Old Trafford, trust me, they'll turn up. They can't turn up. Sam, they they did two weeks ago in the cup. They beat us. Trust me, they're going to turn up. And then we've got the Merseyside derby at Goodison. Civilian X, loads of games to go, mate. Loads of games to go. You're not suggesting that Pickford is going to turn up and like... Actually, to be fair, the cup... Was it last season that we we got pick, pick, peak? Pick, (laughs) pick... Pickford. Peak. Pickford. Pickford. Yes. At. Um, I hope there's a pop mic on that microphone. There it actually isn't. The pop mic's on that one. All right. Um, on. When was that? What season was that? We stood outside the Spurs stadium watching Liverpool play Everton in the know. lunchtime kickoff. We were sat with James from Planet FPL and we watched Liverpool Happy Everton ago, on it? the terrace outside White Hart Lane. Yeah, yeah. No, that's outside Spurs stadium, not out of White it's Hart Lane. Th- it's still White Hart Lane. Oh, you still call it White Hart Lane. Okay, fine. Come on, uh, man. Super chat from Joseph Maloney. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, hey, Samily. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, mate. Hope your game week is a good one. Uh, mixed here in the FPL family, Joseph. We'll talk about that in a sec. Um, I got 66 with a green nice. arrow. Very nice. Very, very good that Joseph so Joseph good. Maloney yeah, Joseph we had Maloney a nice chat we had a peach on chat last week nice score nice score uh, another one of our patron supporters George is here George Day how are you doing mate listen big Brentford well, fan George I've got a patron call with George later on big Brentford this fan week. George and he and I had a chat briefly on Slack today about how on earth that was they got a draw out of that. I mean, I, I just what was that stat I read to you earlier at lunchtime? Was it Manchester United eighty? Was it eighty? No, Brentford eighty five touches in the Manchester yeah. United box. Most of any team in the Premier League for three years. For three years, unbelievable, unbelievable. Thirty something shots. It's just Mental. crazy. And George's season ticket holder, right, goes every week. He was at the game. He said it was just the I most frustrating so, yeah. game he's ever been to because they completely dominated, and then Mason Mount just pops up. I I said to you, didn't I? Twenty minutes from in, I was just like, United will nick this one nil. They'll just nick it. And when they did, I was just like, that is unbelievable. So I was so pleased. So pleased. Sorry, United fans. I was so pleased when no, Brentford sorry. got the equaliser because they deserved it. They absolutely deserved yeah, they did it. They deserve it. Well, they deserve to win the game. Uh, Mohar is in. FPL family, the best ever. Oh, thank you, Mohar. Aww. Appreciate it, mate. Appreciate it. There's a lot of love in the chat today. A lot of love today. That's Must nice. be this good Easter vibe going on today. Um, Paul Cook. Um, sorry, Lee. City will still win the league. Paul, nah. listen. Eight, loads of time to go. Nah. It's, there is all to play for, Paul. I would not disagree with you. Uh, Torben Nielsen is in. How are we doing, mate? Andrew Yee. Nice to see you, mate. It was a miracle. Manchester United got a draw. No chance. A miracle happens again. And we turn up at Anfield, especially... After two weeks ago, I've got a feeling that it's at Old Trafford, isn't it? I think we've got Sheffield United at home, then we're away at Old Trafford, and then we're Palace at home before the double game. I think, Andrew, I think it's at Old Trafford. So, listen, anything can happen up there. Uh, Daniel Banks, he says, did anyone else forget that Mason Mount went to Man United? Had you forgotten that? I know, I knew he was there. He is the forgotten boy, doing. though, isn't he? Yeah. He's been injured for the whole season, doing. hasn't he? A yeah. uh, whole host of you guys. And so, guys, thank you very much for joining us here on FPL Family. Uh, give us a like on the video if you're enjoying the live stream. Um, if you're new around here, obviously hit that subscribe button uh, while you're with us. We would love for you to do that. That helps us to grow <laughs> the channel and get to new audiences. Helps build this little community of FPL uh, managers that we've got here on a Sunday night. So, guys, thank you for doing that. Let's Sam get on with some of these games. Um, you said a second ago you wanted to start with a particular game. Do you want to start with Man U then? Well, no, that? I just... They were just so bad. So I got obviously got home... Go on from, then, let's do that quick. I, I got home from Spurs midway through the Aston Villa game. Yes. That was on before. And was quietly seething about Ollie Watkins having gone off and then sat through this game and I could not fathom... All I wanted really was Tony to be quiet. <laughs> because he was the only player that could really hurt me in this one. Yeah. There wasn't anyone else that was that heavily owned. So I just was praying for a Tony quiet day. Um, but it was baffling to me that, that Brentford didn't get the win out of this game. Manchester United so bad. And I'm scouting them because going into the... Not now, because it's it, they've got some challenging fixtures, including the Liverpool game that we've been talking about. Yeah. But once we get to game week 35, the fixtures really swing for Manchester United. Well, 34, they have got Sheffield United at home. I appreciate it's not a it's double. It's a single, yeah. But it's Sheffield United at home. It's not the end of the world, it's is it? No, but that's what I mean. And then when you look beyond that, 35, 36, 37, which will be a double for them, mm-hmm. the fixtures are, they're highly investable. You, you can absolutely go there. Highly now, investable? On, the, on, the, on like the fixture that? ticker. On paper, highly so, investable. So they're highly okay. investable. So in my in my head. What about after you've watched them? Well, so this is the point, right? <laughs> so I, I create my wild cards and I'm like, right, let's let's create some opportunities. So let's have 
let's have a Gordon slot who could maybe be Garnacho if Gordon, yeah. you know, gets suspended, idiot, um, or <laughs> something else happens. Let's have a, a flexible forward slot where maybe it could be Hoyland if I want to. Honest to goodness, I watched that Manchester United game and I was like, mm. "What? What? Yeah, another like, very inept performance." I mean, I can understand Garnacho. I can understand people going for Garnacho because he's cheap, he's cause he's yeah, cheap yeah, and people will be looking for a cheap midfielder option, particularly if they don't have Salah, because it might just create that opportunity to get him mm. in. I think there's so many games in this run-in for Manchester United. Like, they're almost a team at the minute where they honestly, like... And United fans, tell us in the live chat, because I know there's a few of you in, right? Um, it's absolute... I've just got... Right, I've just got to ban this knobhead who's in here, right? Oh, is it the Harry one Watkins again? Watkins out for the season. He's not, right? So, go away. Simon, if you're in, get rid of this knobhead again. It's the same guy from last week. Um, so... Um, yeah, Manchester United, they are such a Jekyll and Hyde team. It's like when we go to Old Trafford, we will they'll give us a game, right? But then they'll go away to Bournemouth in game week 33 yeah. and they'll be, you know, they'll be inept again because it'll be, oh, can we be asked to go all the way to Bournemouth away? Can we be asked to go to the Vitality? It's a bit like that, isn't it? And that's what it felt like with Brentford today. Can we be asked to go all the way to London to play Brentford? Oh, we can't really, you know. <laughs> and it's just like... I, honestly, I just, I just don't know. Um, so the thing is, the, I don't think that they're highly investable at all. No, I'm not going anywhere near them. When you look at the fixtures from game week 34 onwards, probably from 35, because most people are going to target the double game week is for 34. They are highly investable. The issue I have is they are not playing like a team that are investable. And so looking for somebody that you can have from them just looks really horrible. It's really difficult. Mm. And I think when you've got somebody like Munez up top, from Fulham, who's about the same price as Garnacho, I'd far rather have him You'd have Manito, in the cheap spot absolutely. than you would Garnacho. I'd rather spend a little bit more on the fifth midfielder and have him instead. So, yeah, for me, Manchester United. Brentford as well, investable. Brighton coming up next. Sheffield United at home in 33. No double in 34, just Luton. But the fixtures between now and the end of the season, I've taken this from Fantasy Football Scout. So bear in mind, this is not a this is not a Ben Krellin view where he's got the kind of game week 37 fixtures drafted in. This is what's on the scout ticker right now. This is this is what's confirmed. This is official. Right? This is official, if you like. Um, so bear in mind, game week 37 will look quite different by the time we get there because of double game weeks and stuff. But just look at Brentford's run, right? Even Aston Villa away in 32. I wouldn't say that's as red as perhaps the fixture ticker says it is. And apart from that, it's all pretty blue. So no double in 34. Um Tony on radar or Mbwemo? I, I, what I will say about Mbwemo is I thought he changed the game when he came on. I thought he really gave them a lease of life that they needed. He gave them a bit of a turbo injection. But he's absolutely quality, isn't Good he? Good player, isn't he? Mbwemo? And I think, you know, it's it's a... Um, what's the right phrase? It, it's, you know, you look back with, with a limited window, don't you? So when we look at players in FPL, we kind of go... Right, who's in really good form? When you're like looking over the last two, three, four weeks and you're looking at players that are in form. Because Mbwemo hasn't been around, because he's been injured for such a long time, you kind of, you you forget, I think, sometimes what yeah. a great asset he is. And actually, because he's only been coming off the bench in the last couple of weeks, you probably haven't really been looking at him in the way that you would have done had he started one of these games. But comes off the bench... He did change it because Brentford were all... They were all the quality, but no finish in that in that first yeah, bit of time the against Manchester United. We were creating all the opportunities, but they weren't finishing their dinner. And Buemo comes on and it did change the game. So I think he's definitely on the radar. The issue I have is that, yes, the fixtures are nice for the next couple of weeks, but Brentford are likely to be a team that you don't invest in simply because... You've got other things and other priorities because you are yeah. thinking about... If you are free-hitting in 34, I think Brentford are a team that you can target. If you are not free-hitting in 34, you probably aren't targeting them because you're prioritising your Arsenal's and your Liverpool's and all of those assets. Okay. All right. Uh, super chat from Wilco. Thank you, mate, for the super chat. Um, a lot of chocolate today, he says. A lot of chocolate. Good, Wilco. Uh, he said Absolutely. McAllister was top today. He was, mate. We're going to talk about Liverpool next, I think, because I want to talk about how good... Alexis McAllister was. Uh, swapped Isak to Darwin last minute. Oh, Wilco, I had such mate. a lovely, lovely patron. I've done loads this week. You didn't tell him to do Isak to Darwin, did you? 
No. No, thank goodness. Oh, he's we had Darwin. such a... I don't know what I told him in the end. We oh, talked oh. for ages. I, we, he, I have such lovely chats with him. I, I, I feel like Wilco helps me with my own FPL decisions because he's quite calm. <laughs> and I was very excited about Simicast. And Wilco, to be fair, called it spot on with the back line. He did. Do you know what? He did. Um, because you then said to me, I've just spoken to Wilco. and Because I was saying to you about Simicast. Yeah. And he, Wilco was saying, no, no, he fancied Joe Gomez there. And I was saying, yeah, he's probably got a point because Joe Gomez played there early in the season, played pretty well. But I wanted and Simicast. And so it proved. Because you know so how much I love that man. Yeah, yeah. Um, he said, left 1.4 in the bank, so probably need to sell Lascelles. You do, mate. Yes, he's out. He's done now. We left that himself. for a reason, though, Wilco. What did we left that one point four for? A specific reason was it for Saka? Uh, I think we left remember. that money to to get from Madison to Saka. Okay. He also says date went well. Oh, I, I don't know been, about this. Oh, Wilco, because I haven't been feeling well. I haven't been in the slack. Wilco had a date on Saturday yeah. night, and as part of the date, they were <laughs> they were they were playing FPL Challenge against each other. Oh they God, really? Team, yeah. So they picked team. They picked a team only from the fixtures that were being played while they were on their date. And I'm so here for this. I'm coming in the slack in a minute. We get off this stream <laughs> to find out how it went. He's like, like an FPL Lothario, Wilco. Look at him. He's like, <laughs> just do you want to do you fancy game of FPL challenge? Like, it's like... It, it, when he started talking to her, <laughs> on, he came in the slack and he said to us, Amazing. is it all right? She likes football. Do you think it's all right to ask if she plays FPL? <laughs> yes. We were like, yes. Go on, Wilco. Go on. Are we giving relationship advice in the slack now? I feel like a bit of like it's oh, like a dating agency go. now. In Join the Join us, patreon.com forward slash FPL family. It's like FPL Tinder in there. It's like <laughs> it has another reason. We're not dating each other. You might get a little bit of FPL knowledge, but more to the point, you get dating advice. We give we give out some relationship <laughs> advice. <laughs> we all encourage it. Love that Wilco. Uh, love that. Um, Cyberdet is in. Nigel the Crabby says, uh, "Was Wilco talking about his Huang again?" It's called Only Huangs at the moment. Not going there. Not going there. Instead, Sam, I want to talk about Liverpool 2, Brighton 1. And good Lord, do I want to talk about some of our players today because there was some right. really, really I'm going good I'm going to get comfortable while Lee talks about Liverpool. <laughs> um, no, no, because I'm always, as usual, I'll be biased, right? Whereas you'll be unbiased. So Until I get um, to Spurs. I thought Liverpool didn't wake up in the first 80 seconds. Obviously, we come out thinking, right, we're at home against Bournemouth, against um, Brighton. We're expected to win. You know, we'll go out and we'll, you know, make easy work of this, I think is what they felt. And straight away, lost the ball in midfield and, and well back. To be fair, great strike. Great strike. So it was poor. Very, very poor start. After that, it got markedly better and improved massively in the second half. The intensity in the second half was much, much better. I don't know what they did at half time. I don't know what Klopp said. It's the same with you lot, right? We said, didn't we, this afternoon, there was a lot of similarities between our game and your game this week in terms of first half dreadful, second half a lot, lot better. And Liverpool were better in the second half. I can tell you, sitting there watching that game as a non-Salah owner... You did not like it, did you? It was very, very uncomfortable from an FPL perspective. Obviously, from a football perspective, I was loving it, right? Because he was getting in all the right areas. He was getting (laughs) shots away. I think I read somewhere that he had 12 shots in the game, which is the most he's ever had. In a Premier League game. In a yeah. Premier League game, which is bonkers. Which is why he got no bonus points, though. Well, quite. He quite. So he got the winning goal in that game, but no bonus points yep. because there was too many shots saved or shots missed mm-hmm. off target. And we know that that feeds the underlying negative, negative bonus BPS, points. right? Yep. So you're absolutely right. That's why he didn't get three bonus points because he had a lot of shots and none of them went in. But you could still, you could just tell that actually that was... Um, is that the noise of my camera going off? Hopefully not. What was that noise? Did I, I don't know. Do you want me to check the fact, check it? Oh, I think it's all right. I think <laughs> it's sure? all right, guys. I'm still I'm still messing about with the technology on my phone being connected to the live stream. I so if, if for whatever out. reason the uh, in case it's saying something, is it saying something? No, it's probably all right. No, it's just saying pause or disconnect. No, that's fine. So that's I'm just fine. Leave it. The, the chat will tell me if the camera goes off. I've got to get back um, in now without Josh drawing my mic. But actually, I think I might have semi fix the lagging thing we had a bit of lag at the beginning of the last week's stream don't we but I think oh, yeah. I, hopefully it's hopefully it's a better experience for you tonight guys um but what was i talking about yeah most so i'm a non at the moment non a mo salar owner i was amazed you didn't bring him in well it was it was only because it would have had to have been for some right yeah but and i thought you might have wild carded in my maybe. head i was yeah kind of, maybe it, do you know if i'm really honest i thought you probably wild card in and not told me like you do sometimes. <laughs> like I fully expected to get to Sky on Saturday morning. No, no, and no. And you no, go... No. I was never doing it last week. Although I am considering it this week. I am considering it this week because I want Mo Salah in my team. Right? And is this I the... want him in my team. But, so are you thinking about it because you want to keep Sun? Um, 
Not necessarily. We'll talk about it later on. We'll talk about okay. it because I have put together a bit of a wild card draft as well. You ain't going to like it. Why? Because it's very There's not a lot of mine. Spurs and there's a lot of Liverpool. Well, um, but... <laughs> that's not necessarily uh, the wrong thing, though. Well, I know. And again, if you look at the fixtures and you look at the rest of the season and you just sort it based on, and I know there's going to be double game weeks later on, right? Two but... for Spurs in the last four weeks. Yeah, and that's and by if I do what if I do wild card or indeed just get rid of Son this week, it's that's not to say I'm not coming back for him at some stage. I probably will, right? I probably if you, will. If you let him go, then he won't want to come back to you. Well, there is that, right? There'll be some sentiment Sun in there. Some divides sure. loyalty. But look, it. if it went getting rid of. You know, look at Liverpool's run for the rest of the season. It just looks really good, which is I can see why a lot of people are saying that we're favourites for the title, right? Because the, the fixtures look good. I can't go into 31 with no Liverpool on my team. Salah's going to be overwhelmingly the captain, see, isn't he? He's, you know, whoever hasn't got him, they're going to be bringing him in and captaining him. So anyway, it was very, very uncomfortable not having Mo Salah. Um, and I you didn't like it, so I am gonna though. I am gonna change it. Could um, have been so much worse for you. Yeah, great save by, by Verbruggen, wasn't it? Sort of last five minutes from Mo. Yeah. Um, and then a couple of chances in the first half. There was one where um, Diaz scored what we thought was going to be a third goal. That was a Salah assist when he was like he had a you know he was a toenail offside or whatever bottom. Diaz. So uh, I think Lewis Dunk's bottom was just the uh, the right side of the line from his perspective. So yes, I it, I hated it. I hated watching Salah not having him in FPL, so I'm going to rectify that, right? As it happens, this week, not doing the Son to Salah transfer worked out because Son was great, got the goal, could have had more. I captioned him. That was the right choice. But in any other given week, given particularly what's coming up for Spurs versus, versus what's coming up for Liverpool, including a double game week in 34 versus a Spurs blank, I want Mo Salah. So I'm doing everything I can to get him in. And I'll be thinking about what else I want from Liverpool. If I wildcard this week, it will be three Liverpool. I'm not sure what. And based on today's performance, it might not be Darwin. Because I didn't think he was... He didn't look fit today. He didn't look fit. I don't know... Tell me what you think of the Darwin performance, because I've spoken a lot about Salah there. But I don't think he got in the game. He didn't have his usual intensity. He didn't look kind of like hyped for it. I thought Dunk had him in his back pocket most of the game. Just thought he got, got marked out the game, Darwin. And, and he didn't even, he wasn't even kind of putting in his usual work rate that makes space for the other two, although the other two did make very good use of the space that they had. But, but there's I still a reason think Darwin why Darwin looked off it today. But I think there's a reason why Klopp doesn't play South Americans after an international break mm. most times. Oh, Diaz but, did all right, though. Well, I know that, but Darwin doesn't ever really after an international break. Yeah. So for me, I, I watched it. Yeah, I didn't think he was great today, but I was still worried. Do you think that Darwin gets to start against Sheffield United? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think it was. I'm not sure. Because it's only, what, it's four days away. I think we're playing, like, is it Wednesday or Thursday? I, can't, I don't know. Somebody will tell us in the chat. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I think Cody will get a start. I think Gakpo will start. It's just whether he starts... In the Cody, if Cody starts, he'll be in the middle, I think. And then does Nunes start left or does Luis Diaz start left? Because Nunes come off after came off after like seventy odd minutes today, whereas Diaz come off on like eighty six, eighty seven. Yeah. So I'm I'm not sh- I'm not sure about the Nunes start. I'm I think it will. I think it will, but I'm not I'm not a hundred percent. And from that perspective, it makes me it puts me off of him a little bit. Adam's saying it's Wednesday. George is saying it's Thursday. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Uh, Wilco saying Thursday. Ken's saying Wilco, Thursday. Wilco right. would know. We're saying Thursday. Adam has uh, retracted his message. <laughs> so I think Adam's got that wrong. Fair play, Adam. It's Wednesday. Um, it's Thursday. Oh, Jesus it's Wednesday. It's, no, it's Thursday. Thursday, Liverpool it's, uh, versus Chelsea. Yeah, United. Liverpool and Excellent. Sheffield United and Chelsea and Manchester United on Thursday. Okay, very good. What else from Liverpool then? So we'll all be, or certainly I will be, looking at more Liverpool um, this so week I'm if I go of, for the wild card. I'm kind of intrigued by this statement. Yeah. So I'm looking at more Liverpool. Yeah. Fair enough, because you haven't got any. Yeah. So Salah and Darwin, fair enough. I yeah. can understand why you would be looking at them. I'm intrigued by who you would treble up with because the defence... Well, Alisson and Trent are supposedly due back on the 7th of April, which is the weekend. Yeah, yeah. So that pretty much would rule out investing in Kelleher or Bradley. Yeah. You've got Robbo, who was back in training yesterday. So that would affect the other side of the pitch, the Gomez slot. Yeah. So really, I think the only defender you could probably safely invest in... Virgil. Is Virgil. Yeah. 
yes, you could take a bit of a punt with your midfielder slots and go for a, I don't know, a Sir Bosley or a McAllister. Yeah, yeah. But it, but those midfielder slots feel quite precious. Like by the time you've got Salah and Sa- uh, Saka, yeah, yeah, and you've probably got a well, definitely Palmer. Yeah, that fifth midfielder slot is intriguing for me though. But if are they people, cheap enough? If there's people thinking about Garnacho and there's people thinking about who else is cheap in that well, slot? Well, there's like people like Declan Rice. People are thinking if about. If people are thinking of that, then you should, I think Maka needs to be in the conversation. I think he needs to be in the conversation. So that's where you would go. I th- yeah, as a as a differential, right? right. As a differential, I'm, I'm you know the obvious ones are there, right? Moe's there, obviously. Darwin's there, obviously. Lewis Diaz is there, obviously. Question. Virgil's there, obviously. If Anthony Gordon hadn't have got red carded, yeah. Would you still be looking at McAllister in that spot? Um, I don't think so, because I'd be looking at that Anthony Gordon performance from the weekend and going, he looks pretty essential, particularly yeah. with the Newcastle run-in. So I'm not, uh, this is not me saying rush out and buy McAllister. I'm just saying that he is central to absolutely everything we're doing. Yeah. And by the way, this is probably my Liverpool bias kicking in, because he was he's so good today, right? He was but just because today. he's so good doesn't mean I don't he's essential it... for FPL. So, uh, yeah, and so this is my yeah. point, is you were talking about trebling up on Liverpool, yeah. and I'm I'm with you with the fixtures. It's like, th- don't, this is not me negging on Liverpool in any which way, because no, no. the fixtures are definitely there to treble up. It's just who do you The have. double is there, everything looks great, I think you're going to win the league, you do want to, you want to go with that. I know that you hate it when I say that, you're out the FA Cup, I think that's important, because that's, your focus is fully on this apart from the Europa League. Yeah. Um, and so for me, they are. you are a team that I'm looking at, but I'm looking at Liverpool thinking, that third Liverpool slot, it is so, so difficult. If Trent wasn't coming back soon, mm. you'd go for Bradley all mm. day long because he's cheap. If Alisson wasn't coming back, you'd go for Kelleher. Fine. You know he's back soon, don't you? Jota. Yeah, but, again, but that makes it more complicated again. Doesn't yeah, it? It does. It does. Just makes it even harder, doesn't it? So you're at this point where I'm looking at Liverpool and I think, right, well, Salah's locked. There's, th- you're just going to have Salah. I think Darwin is a lock as well. I think if you of your Liverpool assets, I think Darwin's a lock. I think the other spot, if you want one, it's really hard to know who's going to get the minutes, and of the ones that are going to get the minutes, who's going to be the best FPL asset? Because McAllister was brilliant today. But apart from that, he hasn't been an FPL asset True. for most of this season. Yeah. Uh, some of that, though, is because he's been playing in that six row, isn't Absolutely. he? And now Endo's there, he's playing eight, he's playing more advanced, he's in those areas that you want him to be. Um, nice comment from Adam in the chat. He's saying, uh, McAllis is a little bit like a Douglas Louise. He'll, he'll pop up with assists and the odd goal. So worth a punt. But I think we're all in vermin agreement that it would be a little bit of a punt if we were going there. If you're chasing in your mini leagues, I don't mind it because the fixtures are there, the doubles there. You know, he, he will get assists. He will get assists, Smacker. And no one's got him, right? No one's got him. Um, but I might be letting my Liverpool bias get the better of me there. <laughs> um, I want to jump to your game because, uh, again, you know, a, an unexpected uh, goal fairly early on in the game by Luton, um, only for Spurs to come back into it via an own goal. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Son, the saviour, um, as, no, you know, not for the first time in this game. Oh. Um, before we dive into the game, though, Sam, I'd like to say hello to somebody in the chat. Uh, B Malkani is in the here? chat because um, I absolutely want to say hi to B, but you definitely want to say hi to B, and you did at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Um, is B okay with us talking about what she's doing? No. Oh yeah, but not what she did on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, t- tell people about that on the pitch. Yeah, because um, that is so. B ace. B has been one of our patrons for a long, long time now, um, and he's a the guys who are in here who are in the Slack will will testify that she is an absolutely brilliant. Legend. Brilliant part of our Slack Spurs community. Fan, and she's a Spurs fan. Um, and she has set up, alongside some of the other ladies that she, you know, Spurs um, female supporters, um, a Spurs official Spurs supporters club just for women. Mm. Which, you know, I sometimes I write for Scout on International Women's Day every year. I kind of write something and I put it out. And a couple of years ago, I wrote about my experiences going to Spurs when I was a kid and yeah. how. I used to look around and there, there'd been just no women there. Yeah, yeah. And I'd be there with my dad and it was very male dominated. And I stood on Saturday, got to the game and I was so worried I was going to be late and miss it because we, we were at Sky and I had to get from Osterley to Spurs via home to pick up Max. And we got there on time to watch to watch B 
and her friends who set this up um, talk about the Women of the Lane, which is the the supporters yeah. group that she set up. And B was on the pitch. And B went on the pitch while the kids talking while, over the mic. Yeah, yeah. Unreal. While the players were warming up, and I stood Still there. The big screen. Yeah. Let's go. And, and I stood there and I listened to her, and I <laughs> so was good. like, "Do you know what? This is this is like proper inspirational stuff." And as a mother of a daughter, I was like, "I so wish this stuff." existed when i was evie's age because yeah it fundamentally changes all of the like the the preconceived ideas that you have about football are totally. so different yeah, yeah, totally. and i um i'm so proud of b because she's you wouldn't have like she was probably really nervous because it's like a yeah. massive 60 you know, 61 oh thousand people in the stadium <laughs> right and she's on the mic with these five other, with these four other ladies talking about this supporters group that she set up I, of course, have joined it. If you are a female Spurs fan and you are in the chat or you know a female Spurs fan, send them over. And they're called Women of the Lane. They're on Instagram and X. If um, you just Googled Women of the women Lane, of the Lane they'll it. come up. Yeah, right, um, so sign up. And if you're going to be at the Nottingham Forest game next Sunday night, you'll be able to read all about them in the programme. So, B, you are an absolute legend. And then we... we uh, I went... I took Max to meet her after the game. We had a little cuddle. Had a little catch-up. Nice. Which was lovely. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, congratulations, B. That is such a good... Uh, initiative, particularly as there was a little little bit down the down the lane, wasn't there this week about what? Daniel Levy and him. Well, we all, a, we had a little bit the, of a protest as taking well, taking the concessions away for the OAPs and all that sort of stuff. So for B to get on the pitch and do that for the women of the lane is absolutely sensational. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, tell us then about your experience at the football. Then what actually happened on the pitch after B had done her bit? Because Luton, an early lead. Well, at one um, point I thought B was going to be the highlight. Um, <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> It wasn't and she good was for a long, long period, um, was it? I, it's weird, isn't it? Because I wasn't positive about this game at all, was I? And I, I've been kind of a bit like all week. I, I wasn't feeling confident. Um, and we kicked off, and we were fully in attack. And I was like, "All right, this is fine." And then a sloppy pass, and Luton. Credit to them, to be fair, because they were weren't afraid to have a go. They took won the ball back. They come. They scored and. It was one of those moments where I kind of was like, right. Because you know that Luton can be, when they want to be, they can be solid yeah, yeah, yeah. and they can dig in. And it did take... So the first half, we were so lacklustre and... What do you put that down to then? What changed at half... Because I have a view on this. What changed at half time? <laughs> well, I don't know what Postacoglu says in his half time it's more what he did I thought at half time the well, substitution changed well more it. on that in a minute but what, when he's in the change room he must because it's every week forget the sub for a minute yeah yeah we're the same every week we tend to start off pacey then we die off yeah sort of within about five minutes we die down then we play out with a very lackluster lackluster first half we, he must say something at half time then they go hell for leather for about 15 minutes and then mm. it's the last sort of 10 minutes of the game that they go again so we said, and we were sat there and I was chatting to the guys around us. I was like, the second half will come out better. And then he made the sub at half time, brought on Brennan Johnson, who absolutely changed he the did, game. He did, fundamentally, yes. He changed the game. Kunisevsky was very much drifting inside. Brennan Johnson made really great use of the width of the pitch. Yes, that's exactly what was the, that, that was the difference. Yeah. yeah, and it made a massive, massive difference because he was putting in balls, which were challenging the Luton defence. And they... You know, the likes of, well, if Werner could finish his dinner, that would help. But Werner and Son were in the right places. Richarlison also had a couple of opportunities when he came on as well. Yeah. Son hit both posts. He, I honestly don't know how Son didn't get a hat trick in this game. I, honestly, I couldn't. The one off you. of both posts was unbelievable. As a cap, Son captain of this week, that was unbelievable that that happened. Yeah, it was just. Yeah. What are you doing with your Spurs assets? I don't want to talk about them too much because you've got the blanks. So none of us, I don't think, are bringing any in. But are you holding at least what you've got? You've got Son only? No, I know. No, you mm -hmm. Okay, holding for now? Well, they're going to have two double game weeks in the last four games. Yeah. So I don't. I, like, when you were just saying I might go without Spurs on a wild card, I was thinking, are you mental? Because you're just going to have to build, bring them back in. And then you're going to be at a point where it's going to be tough. If you wild card and you don't prep for Son or a Spurs midfielder, but you have Salah and Sa and Saka and yeah, Harlan, yeah. and you don't leave a spot, that's going to be a tough buyback. So for me, Udogi's a contentious point. He may go because I don't love the Spurs fixtures. After The double is horrendous, whichever way it goes. It's either Chelsea and Liverpool 
or it's Chelsea and Arsenal. Tough, right? So whichever place that first one goes is not great. Yeah. And the second one, all right, it's got Burnley in it, but it's also got Man City in it. So I don't love that either particularly. So for me, Udogi has the potential to disappear and then maybe I bring back a different Spurs defender later on if I want to. But Sun, in my head, there was a downgrade opportunity there. Sun could come down to a Richie or a Madison. But having watched him perform against Luton yesterday... So good, isn't he? I just don't want to go without him. And the fixtures are leading into the blank and ice. I just so bench him in the blank. Yeah, true enough. Um, you're coming up against, you know, away games against West Ham and Newcastle. Neither of those teams are any good at keeping goals out of their net. No. Like, both, and Forrest at home. In actual fact, I would go as far as to say, defensively, Forrest at home is probably the harder game. <laughs> Going to West Ham and Newcastle... I just think, I'm not going to say it's easy, of course, but those teams ship goals like you wouldn't believe. Particularly with the injuries believe. that they've picked up. Yeah, Ariola went off. Totally. They? They've yeah, obviously yeah, lost totally. the cells at Newcastle. They've Wednes Trippier back. But there's a lot There's a lot of defensive headaches in those two clubs. Totally, totally. Uh, and from a Luton perspective, you ain't buying, right? And if you've got Alfie Doughty, he's now flagged in the game, but then who isn't, quite uh, honestly? At the he didn't look great either when he went off, to be fair. He didn't. So he's probably a sell if you've got Alfie Doughty. Um, and if you've got anybody else, I think it's time probably to get rid. And I doubt. We're going to go back there for the rest of the season. What, to Luton? I doubt it. Nah. I doubt it. Done now. Um, let's do... What other teams... I'm I think we've to... got to talk about Cole Palmer and Chelsea. Let's do. Let's rattle through these then, Sam, because we're running out of time, as usual. Well, Chelsea think... 2, Burnley 2. What the bloody hell <laughs> is going on well, at I Chelsea think... Football Club? I just don't like... Would they be... Without Cole Palmer, they'd be relegated, these boys. I said that to you yesterday. I said, what I wanted to do, and I haven't had time to do it yet, is sit down and work out. If Cole Palmer hadn't been there... And I know it's all hearsay at that point because somebody else might have scored the penalties and blah, blah, blah. But if you take away Cole Palmer's goals, yeah. how many games do they actually win? Just Like this honestly. point that they get here. I mean, Jay Rodriguez, he's, how he doesn't score right at the death and take all three oh, points. God. They are 10 men. Yeah. It's just a 10-man Burnley. 10-man yeah. Burnley without the manager because he's been sent off as well. Yeah. And they nearly nick it at the death. Yeah. I feel so sorry for Vincent Company. I think after Liverpool, because we are, oh, we are, on. we get wait, it the worst, wait, wait. right? The tiny violin's got to come back. You out, get guys. your violin out if you want. VAR has screwed us over more than any other team in the in the league, what, right? What That's do you a mean? fact. I That's just a fact. Okay? Are you not talking about the Spurs game again? That's are a you? fact. Oh no, not again. It's a fact. It was back in October or something. Second in the September. screwed over by VAR league is Burnley <laughs> Football Club. Honestly, I mean, I, I'm starting to real feel sorry for these guys. What, what is that? That first one. <laughs> Still he going. puts his hand on Mudrick's shoulder. Mudrick, uh, Mudrick's on the floor as usual at Chelsea because <laughs> they all just do it, don't they? That's why Cole Palmer gets so many pens. As soon as you blow on someone's ear at Chelsea, they're on the floor. Sterling, <laughs> Mudrick, whoever. And then to compound matters, he gets a second yellow. He's like, what are you doing? The it's guy, not even a foul and you've just him. sent him off. He stands there. The guy oh he gets sent and the red card comes out. And the Bur- Burnley just look absolutely shell-shocked. They just, just look, they and then each So other Vincent like, Company the? getting sent off. I'm like, I get it. I'm like, I get it. Yeah. He's battling relegation. You get a decision like that against you. I know. I then think the Cole Palmer penalty... Does, are you all right? You're a bit snotty, aren't you? Very snotty. I'm are, you t- are you muting your mic every time you yeah, blow your yeah, nose? Yeah. Fair play. Um, the Cole Palmer penalty, and I know you Chelsea fans all like the little Penenka. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. It was cheeky. Because it's cheeky. And I think Burnley went in at half-time and went, we've been stitched up by refs again. Manager's sent off. Manager's been sent off. We are pissed off. And you've just Penenka'd us, mate. We're not having that. And I think they went out there and they played Burnley. But, but also, the thing is with Burnley... I thought it was great. It's such a good reaction from Burnley. But Burnley are a tough... Like, you know, they might not be a fancy, skilly football club. Cool. But they Tell are, that to Josh Cullen. What a goal. But they are... <laughs> See well, that? Fair play. <laughs> but they are tough. Do you know what I mean? They're physical, they're tough. Chelsea can't cope with physical and tough. Because that's not how... That's not them, right? They... Honestly, it was bad. And I'm... I've got double Chelsea. No, I haven't. I've got triple Chelsea. That's right. I've trepled up on this load you've got of Petrovic, nonsense. Haven't you? Because oh. I got Petrovic because I wanted a goalie um, for 37. So in came Petrovic. Anyway. You've got Petrovic and Pickford as your two keepers. Yeah. What were you smoking last week? Have you just, have you just decided goalkeepers are just going to be... A, it's, just just a, a, it's just a block. It's, 
Just get a mental block. Then no, no, just, that... what's the point of them? Well, whoever I pick what's the point is going to get two or one. So yeah. let's just at this point go cheap as possible, have them there and be done with them. Anyway, let's so, get back but, to FPL. But because my I... point was that most managers who wildcarded last week yeah. will have done the same as me. They would have yeah. looked at Chelsea's oh, fixtures. Yeah, they'd have looked at Chelsea's fixtures and I gone... I got gusto in this week, didn't I? Well, so did I. For Moreno, who got a clean sheet. Well, we'll have to find out how bad the gusto thing is. He, There was a, a video of the physios feeding him electrolytes on the pitch, which suggests... Feeding what now? Electrolytes, you know, like... Um... The gels? Yeah. Right. Um, which suggests... All right, doctor. What's yeah. It? So right. you're a physio. What's going on here? Yeah, I am. Electrolytes? I'm qualified, you know. <laughs> um... <laughs> You've read something online. No, I watched the video. All right, and then okay. I actually did I did read some stuff online about it because I was like, oh my God, is my wildcard team falling <laughs> apart when when Lascelles has got his ACL done and Watkins has gone off with a hammy. And I was Come like, on, can we hurry oh. this up? No one's getting Chelsea assets because they're crap and they've got Arsenal in 34. So let's, let's well, no, get this done. My point was is that actually I think with Gusto, there was a suggestion that maybe it's not that bad because they were trying to get him to play on and maybe it was cramp rather than an actual hammy. So it might not be so, so bad So we just got to wait okay. and see. So I think if you've got Gusto, you probably can afford to just bench on midweek because he's not going to play midweek I don't think and wait and see Cole Palmer remains you just have to play him because like you said they'll fall over for a penalty next week and they get another one they just I just think they're a laughing stock Chelsea honestly and next year like people the, the chat are saying what's Cole Palmer's price next year well it depends where he is guys because if he's he won't be at Chelsea Football Club they've got to sell their top players otherwise they're in they're in trouble with FFP aren't they they're already they are not in the, and this is a whole podcast in itself, but they're two years into their three-year cycle and you're allowed to lose under FFP 105 million over three years and they're losing something like 250. So they've got to be, they've got to go from the first two years where they've lost like 130, 140 million a year to being plus 150, 160 million a year with no Champions League football. How are they going to do that? Well, there's only one way they're going to do it. Is they're going to sell their players? Lee, it's not without champ- just without Champions League football. They're not going to make Europe. We don't get any money for being in Europa League, do you? It's you Champions get, League. You get some, though. Not so 150 get, million. Well, no, you don't get 150 million, but you get some. They're not going to make the conference either the way they're going. And so... I'll tell you what, the Chelsea fans are going to hate me for this. There were some empty seats in that stadium at the weekend as well. Empty seats. Yeah. There's going to start to be... I'm looking forward to next year and the unravelling of Chelsea Football Club. Well, the just thing saying. is that if they... And they can't afford to get rid of Poch. They can't sack him. Well, they can't sack him because that's another twenty million. They've they have got to, to pay, pay compensation. Yeah. It's the only reason he's still there. Oh. It is the, honestly, it's a joke. But anyway, keep get Cole Palmer and keep him. Yeah, just yeah, just get Cole. He's just so good, isn't he? He's so good. Um, who else, Sam? We we got we got to talk about this bit of a, it was a bit of a snooze fest in the end. City nil, Arsenal nil. Um, Both of them not wanting to lose. That was the trouble. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of risks being taken in this game today, was there? Which is kind of understandable given where they're at. Um, Arsenal obviously are going to be a team that we're continuing to invest in and target because the fixtures look great. Um, now that this one is kind of out of the way, if you like, um, they've got the double game week coming up. I think that's only. I think I read online that was only the second time in something like, I don't know, it's like what was it like sixty, seventy home games that um, City haven't scored, so right. the other team have kept a clean sheet. So fair play to Arsenal. They did have periods in this game where they could have won it, um, but it just, if anything, underlined what we already know about Arsenal, which is their defence is really, really good. Yeah, they defended well. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the best game in the world. No. Um. City assets, Haaland, Foden for those that have got, Villa coming up at home next, then Luton in 33. In fact, let's just flick to the fixtures. So City, yeah, Villa, Palace, Luton, single game week, Forest, Wolves and what have you next. So it it does look pretty blue, but no double in 34. No, but there will be the double in 37. 37 for City, yeah. So there is a double coming up later on. So it's a brave FPL manager that sells Haaland, isn't it? I won't be selling Haaland. Do you do you do you concede though that that is now a conversation? No. Do you not? No. Because all this season it's been that we're not even asking the question. Yeah. I think there will be some content creators, and I'm pretty sure we'll get asked on the FPL show on Monday. What about Harlan now? Keep or sell? The question will be there now. Well, my answer will be very clear. You keep. Yeah. Okay. I just don't. Even if the question's there. I just. I just. For me. 
the surefire way to ruin the end of your season is to sell Harlan. Because <laughs> yeah, one return yeah. against Luton and you're done. So, Civilian X is saying exactly that. He says, Harlan's form makes me uncomfortable with his cost. Yeah, me and you both, mate. Um, but how do you go without him, question mark? Because you're right. He could pop up with a couple of goals, a penalty and a goal against Aston Villa and you're screwed. And you're done. And yeah. the thing is, we you should never rule... Like, the title... I love this Premier League season for so many reasons. The Champions League spots are wide open with Villa and Spurs. The, the Europa League, the Conference League spots are wide open. The fact that the um, that Liverpool and um, West Ham and Man City and Arsenal and all these guys are doing well in Europe, all of that is boding well for the fifth spot in the league, getting Champions League next year. The relegation battle is yeah. absolutely massive. So the league is like... Nothing settled. It's all competitive still. Including the title, which I'm so here for. And the fact that Man City and Arsenal drew today means that all three of you are still in it. You've got advantage, I think. But all three of you are still in it. So City, Arsenal, Liverpool. No one can afford to rest players. Everyone's got to go all in to win this. At the same time, Manchester City have got to go out and Arsenal and try and win the Champions League. Yeah. And, so don't sell Haaland, you're saying? Yeah. So I just don't think... And Foden? A keep? At his price, he's a keep, isn't he? Well, probably. I mean, I don't have Foden. He's probably the city sacrifice I'm making. Yeah. But there you are. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's... Uh, enough said about that game, really. I think if you've got assets from either of these sides, they are keeps because... They're both good teams. What's uh, what else is there to say? Apologise um, for my nose. I needed should have taken some more tablets before we started. I think they've worn off. I think as long as you're muting sorry, the mic, guys, it's not I'm coming through to... too badly. We it did probably is. I'm sorry. We did warn at the beginning of the stream it would be a bit of a sniffly one. Um, let's talk about your mate then, Anthony Gordon. Oh. Uh, Newcastle four, West Ham three. In what can only be described as a bonkers game. What was this on game Saturday about? lunchtime? Um, whoever said the Saturday lunchtime games are boring because this absolutely was not boring. West Ham three one up only to lose it 4-3. <coughs> Anthony Gordon with um, a sensational performance. I have to say, I thought he, I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant performance. I thought he was, don't come at me, I thought he was a little bit fortunate to get his FPL points. Why? Because he was fouled for two penalties yeah. for the assists. You, yeah. And the assist for Harvey Barnes' goal was just a sideways pass and it's a great strike from Harvey Barnes. But he could have scored with a header in the first half. His performance definitely warranted the points. If that it makes could have sense. been a twenty pointer for him. It could have been, and that's why I'm not getting too out of my tree about it, about the fact that he ended up with eight. Because actually, his performance warranted more than eight. I'm just yeah. saying the way that he got his points yeah, right. was a little bit jammy. But if you if you go step out of the game a little bit and just look at his performance, it was very he was very very good. And actually, the red card as an owner must have been so frustrating because. He kicks the ball away, and the referee. I don't. If you if you watch the video about the referee goes, oh, he's kicked the ball away. Yeah, that's a yellow, silly boy. I don't think the oh. ref knows it's Anthony Gordon when he bets. No, him. he doesn't. He just goes, oh, he's kicked the ball away. That's a yellow, stupid. Oh, it's Anthony Gordon. He's already been, but that's a red, then, mate. You're off. I. D I don't think he reads him. Like I think if he looks up and sees it's Anthony Gordon, yeah. I think he gives him a look. He's just seen the ball being kicked away and gone, oh, that's stupid. Yeah, I yeah. think. If the I ref agree. actually looks at who it is yeah. before the card leaves Already the pocket... Already got his card out of his pocket, isn't he? He probably thinks yeah. that's just stupid yeah. and he probably gives him a warning. Agreed. Because he doesn't boot it into the stands, he just taps it away. There's no West Ham players going, he's kicked the ball away. No. Either. It's just the ref seeing the ball and he's just gone, silly boy, like yeah. that, isn't he? And he's I, just, yeah. I must admit, I was fuming. Yeah. And I was fuming for multiple reasons. How many games did he miss now? It's just one, isn't it? One game ban, okay. But it's still very annoying. Yeah. Because he's also... Re so he he moved his yellow card. So I can't work out whether like, I'm annoyed he misses this home game. I would rather he miss the Fulham away game because I wasn't going to play him for that anyway. Yeah. So now he's going to come... Everton at home, you want him for I that, don't him. you? Yeah. yeah. Um, and of annoying. course, the second yellow becoming a red means he goes back to being on eight yellow. So the chance of him picking up another suspension also oh. goes back in again. Oh, sure. Yeah, so yeah, I'm sure. just sort of like, Anthony, you are doing my nothing. <laughs> because you just, you just, you've been brilliant. And I was like, this is, per as a, uh, with my wildcard active, having lost LaSalle in the first half an hour, whatever time that was, for a one-pointer, yeah. I was like, oh. Frustrating. Is this going to be a wild card that I'm like... Yeah, yeah. 
So then Anthony Gordon getting three assists, I was like, this is literally perfect. Yeah. Then when my sofa score on my phone tells me that he gets sent off, I was like, you're taking a mick now, aren't you? Yeah. And I was annoyed until I saw it and then I was fuming because I was like, you can't get sent off for that. Yeah. Any, uh, so that's Anthony Gordon. I mean, Harvey Barnes being back. He sort of shifted Gordon out to the other wing, didn't he, when Harvey Barnes came on. And actually, if anything, it just made Gordon, Gordon an even better asset. He was yeah. so good coming in and cutting in on that left on his left foot. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. I think he's a top player, Anthony Gordon. It, um, it made Isak a better option as well. Well, yeah. So here's the comment. Here's the conversation we need to have, really, is that, you know, a lot will be looking at Ollie Watkins now. And if he has got a bit of a hamstring injury... You know, some will be looking at Darwin, but I, for one, am be looking at Isak. Mm -hmm. Particularly, I mean, Everton at home next. Everton are rubbish, by the way. Absolute guff. And then you've got, what, Fulham, Spurs is difficult. Then it's a single game week, Crystal Palace. But they come out of that to Sheffield United, Burnley. The fixtures, it's again, just flick back to the fixtures. But this is they what... look really, really good. Isak, for the rest of the season, could be a really nice pick. But most people will be making a straight choice between a doubling player for 34 and Isak. Yeah, this is the thing, So for it? me... Uh, when I was looking at a Watkins replacement, and we'll get to our teams in a minute, I was like, well, yeah, Isak is looking attractive. However, I would prefer to invest in somebody that's got a double in 34, knowing that that person that's got a double in 34 won't then have a double in 37, so they can become Isak later. Because the other issue I have with Isak yeah, okay. is that you don't miss out on much by not investing until 35. There's a few fixtures in there, Namely Everton, Everton at the weekend. This weekend. But the but the other fixtures I think are against defences that can be tighter. I and I, I think you I could wait that. to thirty five, invest in thirty five for that lovely run of fixtures that also includes the double game week. The yeah. other issue I have is that he is so injury prone that yes you can say oh, I'll get Isak till the end of the season. That's but a Newcastle will he, problem though. But will it? he actually make it till the end of the season? And I know you can't odds that and you can't plan for that. But for me, I'm like, I'm looking at it going, my priority at the moment is 34. So who's got nice fixtures in the build up to 34 and has a double in 34? And then 35 through 39 is a different phase of play. That's where Isak's going to be in for me. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think it's closer than that, though. I just think Isak, he's nailed on. Whereas Darwin, if, if that's the person you're comparing him to with this double game week chat, isn't well, it's going to be Jesus as well. Think. He was back in the starting Yeah, today. Jesus as well, potentially. But Isak nailed on on penalties. Mateta, <sighs> you're having Isak over Mateta and Jesus, aren't you? For me, it's Isak and Darwin at the two. Um, I don't know, I just think he's a really good pick, and I, I don't, I'm not sure many people have got him. I think he's really nice. The one thing I will say is that Anthony Gordon being out of that Everton game is bad news for Isak. Harvey Barnes, God love him, loves a shot, doesn't he? He yeah. loves a shot and he carries a bit of goal threat because of it. And actually, don't mind him as an FPL differential for this week. Not sure because of the Gordon thing whether I'd bring him into my FPL team. But if someone said to me, you want a one-week punt in 31, I'd say Harvey Barnes right now. Like a challenge. Like an FPL challenge, potentially. Um, but when Gordon's back in, Gordon is so good for Isak because Gordon's just so clever with his assists and his creativity. He's, he was unbelievable the weekend. And, of course, he gets into those areas where they just, you know, every time he got in the box, Gordon, mm. they were they were crapping it, weren't they? They're absolutely crapping it, West Ham. West Ham love giving away penalties as well. Absolutely love giving away penalties. Who's up next against West Ham? Song. Which is why, another reason, I might not want to sell Song. <laughs> um so that is uh, so that's Newcastle versus West Ham. I've not got much to say about West Ham other than Calvin Phillips. Areola injured. What are you playing at, Calvin? I honestly don't know what has happened to this kid. He was really good at Leeds, and since he's left Leeds, he's just been really unlucky yeah, but, with injuries. And but no, don't but, give me that. No, it, it, but also, what's he doing? Like the touch in the box. I is understand. A I, do, I get it. He was terrible. But he has been really unlucky with injury. He should never have moved to City. It was one of those moves where it just was never likely to be a yeah. first choice starter. And I think it's massively affected his confidence. He's gone to West Ham. I don't he's, want to talk he's having Phillips. a shocker. And the West Ham fans are on his back all the time, as you would be, yeah. because he's having a shocker. It's a nightmare. And Ariola got injured. And Bowen and Kudos trolled everybody. Yeah. 
the, the free hit 29 team was doing quite well at 3-1, wasn't it? With Kudos Bowen, and Bowen going Bowen off. was the second most transferred out player in game week 30. Was he? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, that's it, Sam. We haven't got time to run for any more other than uh, Villa played very, very well. Consa didn't mean it, but um, fair play to uh, anyone that had Consa. I think Pras had Consa, yeah. So fair play, 15, 15 points. points. Very nice. And it was a nice finish by DRB. Um, I like that. That was very, very good. Uh, what else to say? Who Dom Solanke popped up with another goal against uh, Everton. So don't write him off. I know a lot, including yourself, sold him on wildcard. Yeah, um, but I sold him for Muniz. But many were selling for your man Muniz, who up until the 93rd minute was looking all right in the game and then pulls out what can only be described as a worldie of an overhead kick. It's 8-8 eight eight now and it's an assist. 8-8, eight eight, Muniz. Unbelievable. It's so, so good. Um, dirt cheap in FPL, as we know. And if we look at the um, Fulham fixtures going forward, um, they ain't too bad. Forest, Newcastle, West Ham. Now, we've just talked about how bad West Ham and Newcastle's defences are. Well, Forest, OK, not bad. You don't like him for the double in 34 because he's only got one game and it's Liverpool. But then out of that, into Palace, Brentford, Luton on the final day. I don't mind Muniz. If you, if you want to go there... Absolutely go there. I've got nothing against the Mooney shout at all. He's absolutely in great, great form. Um, those are the games, Sam. Uh, let's, and I know, oh, I just realised that I was on the fixtures page. As, <laughs> there's me flicking through all the scores on this page. And I was sitting on fixtures. Sorry, guys. Uh, there we go. That is the fixtures. Um, let's just give a quick shout out for all of our patron supporters. So we've got a whole load of you in this evening. So thank you for everyone that joins us over on patreon.com forward slash FPL family. If you want exclusive podcasts, if you want access to uh, Wilco's love life in the Slack, <laughs> if you want uh, Zoom calls with us, as we've been doing quite a lot of the last couple of weeks. If you want to hear about size multiple hits every week. If you want to hear about Cyberdebt's fairly unorthodox approach to FPL. Um, FPL challenge is basically for Cyberdebt, isn't it? I actually, I, mean, I think we should have called it that. I think we should yeah. have called it FPL Nigel the Crab. Yeah. Because it feels like a game. And thanks to everybody in the Slack for giving me loads of sympathy last week when I ruined FPL Challenge for the whole of the community. I appreciate that. Um, that was a mistake that I won't be making again. Um, so FPL family, uh, patreon.com forward slash FPL family is where you can find uh, a bit more of me and Sam in your lives if you want podcasts and competitions and Zooms and all that sort of stuff. All that sort of stuff. Uh, let's have a look at our teams, Sam, then, and how we got on. I'll go first because... It wasn't particularly good. It wasn't particularly good. It's a red arrow, um, an overall rank change of minus 24%. Um, I've gone down from about 47k to about 56k. So it's not the, not end, the end of the, of the world. world. Given that I didn't wildcard this week, it's not the end of the world. I've got my captaincy... Did I get captaincy right? Because I did consider Palmer. Obviously, I've got the vice on him, so I did consider it. I sort of feel like if Palmer was 9 million, I'd consider him for captaincy more. <laughs> no. Weird, right. isn't it? If Palmer was playing for Liverpool or Spurs, you'd have had yeah. him in the armband. It's, it's because it's stupid, Chelsea. It? It's stupid. It's because I don't trust Chelsea. That's my issue with Palmer. It, but Chelsea at home to Burnley, you're just like, yeah, just but, captain him. Why would you not do that? I don't know. Anyway, I got caught up in the Sun hype. Because um, Sun which was wasn't, to Luton. Which wasn't incorrect, right? Because actually he was unlucky not to get more than 10, but... In the end, I was happy with the Son uh, return. Solanke coming in as well was good. Um, the, the, I just called the Arsenal game wrong, didn't I? I just called it wrong. I went for... Um, I fancied City to beat Arsenal today. I fancied City. Didn't happen. So instead of Foden and Haaland getting me points, Gabriel and Saliba are sitting on my bench for a combined 13, which Ow. it is what it is. It hurts, but I made a call and I got it wrong. So therefore, if you make a wrong call, you get a red arrow. You have to take it, right? So... 55 points, um, up to or down to 56k. Potential for wild card, maybe, maybe over the next 48 hours. And I've got a little draft that I've put together, which, as I was putting it together, made me think I shouldn't be doing this, but I'll share it with you anyway. That's interesting because that's normally quite a telling thing. So when you when you start, because that's what made me do it the yeah. week before, is that I started building it. I was like, it's no different. Let's just do yeah. it. But look at these flags, Sam. Look at the flags. Yeah. But... So not only have I not only have I got a transfer in midfield that I want to make because I want Salah. Yeah. I've got you know Ariola is a problem. I've got Watkins is a problem. Yeah, Doherty's a problem. Gusto's a problem. But you don't. Saka and Gabriel not problems as we found out today. But Ariola's not a problem because you've got the Bravka. So he is an issue, but he just sits there. You can play Saliba. I don't Saliba. think Dubravka's an answer though, do you? You're not the answer. No, but he, well, against Everton. Nor's Petrovic or Pickford, by the way, but still. 
the Pravkas are not the answer. You can't say Ariola's injured, but you're okay. You've got one of the worst keepers in the league. <laughs> but he's going to play, was my point. Oh, great. So you don't have to make a goalie transfer. That's my point. Right. If if Gusto and Doughty... Well, Doughty's not going to make it. If Gusto doesn't make it, then you want to play Saliba and Gabriel anyway. So that's really not an issue either. They can go on the bench. Watkins, who's your other bench player? Saka. Oh, well, you want to play Saka anyway. So just shove Watkins Saka, on the bank. Yeah. On, on the bank? On the beach. On the beach? On the bench? So, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> on the bank and on the beach are you alright love oh no what's going on well, I don't think I am Lee um, you need an early night you? my point is is that the players that you've got flagged aren't the end of the world Watkins is the one isn't he Watkins is the one I'm I'm with you I, the initial reports seem to suggest that Gusto might miss Man United but look I want, him, I want him for after that right yeah. but Watkins if he's going to miss City, again, not the end of the world, so I probably would have benched him anyway. Yeah. But if he's going to miss Brentford next weekend, then we're going to be going into a run where it's Arsenal, single game week, Chelsea, Brighton, Liverpool. I don't think I want Watkins for that run, you know. No. I don't think I want him. So, Just take a minus four then. Do I do... Yeah, do I do something about that? Anyway, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um... The chat saying Sam wishes she was on the beach. This is what it was. You just you, you so wish you were on the beach on the or at the beach. bank. You know, either one, either one, just it's, well, not it depends. on the bench. It depends what I was going to the bank um, for, to be honest. Let's talk about how your wild card did then, Sam. So you are up a little bit, which is good. Two hundred and fifty-three k, so sixty-two on the wild card. There's a couple of there's a couple of unluckies in there, isn't there? Because Gordon definitely unlucky to get you know not only the red but missing out on bonus points as a result. Um, Udogi potentially could have got a bit more, you know, double Chelsea defence at home to Burnley. You're expecting that to come in. Lascelles gets injured. It's it's a bit, there's a little bit of un- unluckiness in there, but 62 is all right. It's all right. Do you know, with a wild card, if you get a green on the back of a wild card, I always think that's a bit of a, it's a bit of a success because normally it takes a couple of weeks because the wild card isn't just for that week. You plan it for, yeah. you know, the next few. So the fact that it was green straight away was good. Yesterday, I shouldn't have checked because last night the the rank game was massive and I was like, right, Salah goes off tomorrow, Haaland does something and wipes out the, the Arsenal clean sheet and we're laughing. Yeah, yeah. As it happens, Salah... Were you well, on quite a big green this time yesterday? Yeah, like 85k. I was. I was 28k this yeah. time yesterday. It was like an 85k. But I'd have most of my team playing. I didn't have Salah or any Arsenal playing. Yeah, so, so I, I knew it was going to take so some I, hits. So I was up 85k to two. I was on about 200k. Yeah. And I had my captain's play in Salah. Yeah. And I was thinking, as long as Haaland scores or someone wipes out the Arsenal clean sheet, there's not that many players out that can hurt me, apart yeah. from Saka being on the bench. Salah. I don't think I've ever felt as frustrated watching a player as I did today watching Salah. I was just like, are you joking? Like, Yeah, all it, them shots, right? All them shots. Because this was the week. This was the week I wanted to captain him because he was going to be a good differential because not as many people owned him. He was 85%. People will be getting it going there now, won't they? Yeah. Exactly. If not wildcard, then you'll find a way to get him now. He I was think. at 85% EO. I was like, this is ideal. Yeah. Under 100 for my captain. Perfect. Like, go off. Two or three goals. We're laughing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Didn't so, look like it half time though, did it? No, but the second half, it really did look like he was yeah, good. Yeah. The and... Verbruggen save was the key one. Yeah. How he's got down to that. If you get a couple of goals out of Mo, then you're getting bonus points as well, aren't you? Yeah. And and so I do feel like it feels a bit like the one that got away. But yeah. Fair enough. It's it's a green, which is the important thing. We turned a corner on the terribleness that's been the last few weeks. A lot of flags in this team now, though, Sam. Not really. I mean, Anthony Gordon's flag because he got sent off, so he's going to miss midweek. Fine. It's annoying. He can go on the bench for this week. Obviously, I'm going to want to play Saliba and Saka, so they come back in. And yeah. The flag obviously disappears off of them because we know that they're they fine. are not. They're fine. Uh, so, really, the flags are on Watkins. More on that in a minute. Um... Lascelles and Gusto. When we've spoken a lot about Gusto, he's going to just sit on the bench because I'm, I'm hopeful that we're not going to lose him for the too cheeky long. Cheeky little eight. Nuri sitting there. Didn't notice you sneak him in on your wild card. That's a nice little pick. Got oh, Burnley next week yeah. or next game week. I just snuck in a bit of eight Nuri love. Um, Don't mind that. I, I did that cheeky. quite. I did that quite late. Um, got him instead of Zabani. Um So, so yeah. who would you be talking about now? You'd have Udogi, Saliba, eight Nuri. That seems fine. 
Do I'm actually fine. Right. Like I'm actually fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, with Gusto maybe coming back for the week after, let's see. Yeah, with Gusto maybe coming back for the week after. Anthony Gordon's on the bench. Yeah, Saka's yeah, yeah. in his place. I'm actually fine um, because I've already made a transfer. Tell us about your transfer. You've done Watkins to Darwin, haven't you? Yeah, because, well, it was yeah. planned. That yeah, was planned sense. anyway. It makes sense. I, I, I planned to do that anyway. I'd said that all week that if I kept and if I kept Watkins, and I was very torn, and even up until the fact uh, up until we went live on Sky, there was a moment where I was sat in makeup on Saturday where I was like, just do Darwin now. Yeah. Just do it now. I know that Watkins has got a nice fixture at home to Wolves, but just save a transfer and do it now. And in the end, I just was like, I will kick myself. He goes off against Wolves, yeah. I will kick myself because I've held him for two weeks. Yeah. I can't do it now. So I didn't. I put my phone on aeroplane mode and then promptly forgot to take it <laughs> off aeroplane mode all the way home, didn't you I? You did actually, yeah. Um, the notifications were real, weren't they? Yeah, when I came yeah. back. And um, I just was like, I can't. I've got, to turn, I've got to turn my phone off and I've got to leave it. But the intention was always, even if Watkins had gone off yesterday, even if he got a hat trick against Wolves, I was always planning to sell him for Darwin. I wanted and I was hoping and praying because Darwin was a, around the price rise yesterday mm. and I was like, no, I don't want that because I want him to play before I do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, as soon as the Liverpool, as soon as he went off today, I did it. Yeah. Okay. Um, because I knew he was all right then. I so like yeah, it. I've done. I've done Good Darwin move. in. I've got my two Liverpool now. So now I'm doubled up on Arsenal. I'm doubled up on Liverpool. That gives me a couple of weeks to work out how do I treble up on those two if I want to. Puts me in a position where I've already bought eight Nori in, so I've got him for the double as well. I feel like, like the it. team is nicely set. Like it. And it's not a million miles away from what I'm thinking for wild cards. So this is... I just did this like a few minutes before coming on. Like, And again, as I was putting it together, I was thinking, I'm not really making massive changes here. Like, there's a lot here, that which four? is... a Say again? Is that only four changes? It's only four changes, yeah. So... A lot of it is moving away from Spurs and towards Liverpool. So it would be Son to Salah. So I do that. I do Richarlison to Luis Diaz. I do Watkins to Darwin. Um, and then I can't even remember. My, oh, it's Alfie Doughty. So Alfie Doughty to Eight Nuri. And then while I'm there, because why not? I'd get rid of Ariola and get Verbruggen in because I think Brighton have a double in 37 or at least projected. Don't worry, not to. worried about steel. Because um, he's rotating them all the time. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But so again, I'm looking at this going. You know, my team for next week would have the three. So my three Arsenal, and I'm ha- very happy to do Gabriel and, and Saliba at home to Luton. T- yeah, that's absolutely fine to double up Arsenal defence, and then have Saka sitting there. Um, Son to Salah, I do. Um, Richarlison to Diaz. It feels a bit luxury, doesn't it? It doesn't feel doesn't feel like a doesn't feel like a, you need to pop your wild card to do that. Watkins to Darwin, I could I could definitely see me doing that, but for a hit. I wouldn't need to do it for a wild card. I could do it for a hit. So I'm kind of thinking, well, do I just go that for a hit or do I go wild card and get eight Nuri and Luis Diaz for Doughty and Richarlison? No, probably not. If you did, I just um, feel like Richarlison could be just as good against West Ham as Diaz would be. I do fancy Diaz against Sheffield United, but I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people saying get Muniz for Solanke. I'm, I'm not feeling it, you know. I'm not feeling it. I just think Dom is... is you know, you've got Palace at home, then Luton, um, which is, I think, the Luton game has got, that's his sort of game where it's a physical game. He'll do well against Luton. Manchester United at home, you know, I've already said about, you know, United going away. United did not, they just didn't want to be there in Brentford this weekend. Mm. They are not going to want to be in Bournemouth. So I can see Solanke getting something out of that game. He's on penalties as well, Solanke. He's not really doing anything in my team to make me want to take him out. I don't think now, you can wildcard four, for four players. No, it doesn't make sense, does it? It's just not. It's just not worth it. Because the thing is, if you really want Darwin, Watkins to Darwin is going to save you somewhere in the region of a million, one point one, one point two, one point zero, depending upon when you bought Watkins. Yeah. Salah, you've got money in the bank, the exact money, right, to go from Salah to Son. So there's not quite enough money to go from Richarlison to Salah instead no, by saving the money, which no. is which is a shame. I could really. go from Watkins to Muniz, and that would give me Richarlison to Salah. And keep Son. Keep Son. Maybe. Maybe. Um, but, I don't know. I just, I just I, the, the point of putting this together was, should I wildcard or not this week? And at the moment, it's not, no. Not if you would only make those no, changes. No, I'm not. And it, this is it. This is the changes I'm going to make. Right? That midfield, Foden, Palmer, Salah, Saka, I'm cool with that. 
I don't want to change that. You wouldn't. Okay, that's interesting. I don't think I want to change that. Would you make any changes to that? I'd probably sell Foden. Foden. Yeah, you see, I don't. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Aston Villa and Luton at home. The next two of the next three, you just can't do it. And I, even with the what, even the single game week in thirty four with Brighton, I, I just, I know they got a nil nil today, but he's been so good this season. I just don't, I just don't think I would do that. And Richard, I'm just waiting for, I'm just waiting for Richard, like Richarlison. He's had a couple of games now where he's come on a sub. Surely he gets to start against West Ham. Do you think he does or no? Because when he does, I, I just think he's he's going to be fired up for Charlison. I don't know. I don't know whether he's a hundred. So he came on for like ten minutes at the end of the game. He came on in about eighty five. Yeah. He didn't. He was fine. He he got in some good places. He didn't look a hundred percent fit. And my yeah. issue is that I don't think he is a hundred percent fit. They're being careful with him, so aren't they? I think they. I think whatever is up with him. They're treating him with kid gloves. And I think in part, that's because we've got this midweek fixture. That's why Mickey van der Ven, I think, didn't start the weekend. And I was like, where's Mickey? And he's just being careful, isn't he? Which is the right thing. Which is the right thing. And I think what we will see, I think on Tuesday, when we play again, um, we'll see Mickey van der Ven in the starting eleven. I would not be surprised to not see Richarlison in the starting eleven. I think we'll see Brennan Johnson in the starting eleven mm. Because I think he earned it after the weekend, the difference he made. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Richarlison come on on about 60 minutes, get a run in, and then start in game week 32. Yeah, which I don't mind because that's Forrest at home. Yeah. If he started Forrest at home, I'd be happy with that. And like I say, you know, I keep going back to it. These are three defences that Spurs can definitely get at, no doubt about it, which again makes me feel a bit bad about not having Son. But I've got to have Mo. I just think, I just think you've got to have Mo for the next couple of weeks. Um, you can't have everybody. And you can't have everybody. So that's that's what I'm thinking. And again, the Son, the son to Salah move... On paper, I hate it because of the way that Son's playing. Um, but in the, the, I've got to look bigger picture, and it makes much more sense to have Mo over the next three weeks, including thirty-four, where he's got two games compared to Son zero. That I've got to make that move. I've got to make that move. I think. Um, so basically, what you're doing here, if you don't do this now, is you're setting your team up for a thirty-five wild card. I will be 35 wild card almost certainly. Because you're gonna have almost to get you're gonna have to get some Spurs back in. Yeah. And my t- and if I didn't wild card this week, my team still looks pretty good for 31, right? So as I said before, my three Arsenal are there. I've got Zabani, who's gonna be home to Palace, which I don't mind. Gusto probably gonna be on the bench, fit or otherwise, probably gonna be on the bench. Um I've got Doughty that would be there, probably on the bench as well, almost certainly would be on the bench if he's fit or otherwise, whatever, because he's got Arsenal away as the fixture. Um I then have Richarlison, which would be the question mark. I'd play Foden, Palmer, Salah and Saka. That's no issue. And then I'd play Solanke, who's got this nice game at home to Palace. Obviously, I'd play Haaland. And then Watkins would probably be my sub as well. So my bench would probably be Watkins, Gusto and Doughty. So it leaves me a bit... It does leave me a little bit... A little bit light, because I wouldn't have much cover there. All three injured on the bench. So if Richarlison doesn't get any game time... No, that doesn't happen. He doesn't well, get no game well, time. Well, let's assume that he... Let's assume that he comes on for a 10-minute cameo. Then I'm only getting that 10 minutes out of him, whereas I could maybe bench him if I don't think he's going to start and then start Watkins, but I don't think Watkins is going to be fit. Mm. I think it does leave me a little bit light. So I don't, I don't 100% mind doing, the, doing Watkins to Darwin. For a for, minus for four. For a minus four. I'd do that. I think I will do it. I think I will do it. And I will hold the wild card for game week 35. And probably bench for Charleston, yeah. Probably. I'd do that. As first sub, that's what I'm thinking. I just don't think Richie gets a start. It's just not worth the wild card, is it? It's not worth not for wild carding for that. My, it's not. my general it's view not. is that you've got to have at least yeah. five. Yeah, and yeah, I also yeah. think that Verbruggen is a terrible pick. Like, I know that I can't talk about <laughs> goalkeepers, but Steele's been playing every other game. So yeah. I don't think you can go for the Brighton goalkeepers because you never know which one of them's going to get the start. No. So that's, I think, I think my mind's made up. I just wanted to put this out there because I know there will be some of you that will be thinking maybe wildcard this week. I think there's a lot that are considering it after the big double in 35. And, and like I said, I've still got the bench boost. I want to play that in 37. So I want to keep the two of them quite close if I can. Um, so no, I, I don't. At this moment in time, I'm I'm 95 not wild carding. Fair enough. But I'm almost certainly going to do Son to Salah. Almost certainly, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to do Watkins to Darwin as well for a hit. Yeah, fair enough. So I'm going to go Liverpool attack for this next sort of three or four weeks is where I'm going with it. Is where I'm going with it. Uh, that's it, Sam, for this evening. Uh, tell everyone what's coming up this week. Um, so tomorrow I'm going to go 
take a load of tablets, get myself an early night, because tomorrow, <laughs> first thing in the morning, um, I'm recording with Jules and Kelly, um, the latest episode of the FPL pod. Nice. That'll be out Very tomorrow good. afternoon. Very and then once I finish doing that, we're going to drop the kids off and then Lee and I are off to... Um, to the PLP to record the fantasy show together. We're going back to the studio together. Excellent. Every time we seem to go to the studio together, one of us seems to have some sort of ailment. Ailment. I was really ill last time. You were really ill last time. I was well. I actually feel if you think I'm snuffly and annoying tonight, I'm like a million times better than I was this morning. Like I feel much oh, yeah. much brighter tonight. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so tomorrow is a very, very busy day for us. And then um, the back end of the week, you'll be able to catch As and I back on the Q&A. There'll obviously be an Ohana Love podcast for our patrons. And Lee and I are back on Sky Sports News on Saturday. Are we on Sky so, again Saturday? Yes, we're on Sky Top again on Saturday. Visit. Back-to-back <laughs> visits to Sky. Um, possibly that's why I'm not feeling 100% because I've just <laughs> run myself into the ground over the last couple of weeks. But yeah, it's going to be a busy week. And of course... The kids are off school for the Easter holidays, so Wonderful. the juggle is real this week, Wonderful. but it's going to be an exciting week of FPL content, and of course, we'll keep putting out stuff on our channels, um, on Instagram, on Twitter, and on TikTok. Awesome. And on Facebook as well. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, there we go. That is the stream for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, leave us a like before you go. All the usual spiel applies. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. Well done in game week 30. Well done for navigating it. Wild carders. And well done for getting through it, non-wildcarders. Uh, we are going head first into game week 31. The deadline, Sam, is Tuesday. Yes, yeah, 6 at o'clock. What time? 6 p.m. UK time on yep. Tuesday. So do not think, and I know that none of you will, but do not think that you've got a week until game week 31. We haven't. It's Tuesday. And also, don't forget, the challenge this week is forwards. It's quadruple Darwin time. It's quadruple Darwin time on FPL Challenge. For those of you that are playing FPL Challenge, your forward points count double this week. Correct. So if you captain a forward, you get double, double points. Quadruple Nunes points, people. Let's go. Oh I for my one, gosh. I, for one, I'm looking forward to that. Guys, well done in game week 30, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye, everybody.